With its multitude of parks, trees and waterways, we all know that Bristol is a pretty green city and good for wildlife. But these days, rooms abound of a surprising new species moving into town. It's an animal that must surely figure in everybody's top ten of British wildlife. It's hard to track down, it's elusive, but we love it anyway. It's the otter. We normally think of otters living along secret waterways on the Somerset Levels or deserted Scottish sea locks. So I'm setting out to discover just whether the rumours are true and, if they are, to find out just how far into town the animals are coming. So, could otters really be using Bristol's urban waterways? Well, it comes down to two things. Firstly, they need somewhere to hide up and rest during the day. Look at this old drain pipe. It's ideal. And Bristol's got plenty of those. Secondly, they need to eat. Look at this lake. It's stocked full of fish for anglers, making it easy pickings for otters, which could come from this river just down here. So there's definitely a home and food for the otters. Can I find evidence they're actually here? Local man Ian Llewellyn lives near one of Bristol's rivers and he thinks he's already seen signs that they're around. So what's going on here? Well, this is one of the main areas that I've been observing and this is a, a key spot for this otter's movement. It's a really heavily sprainted area. The sprain, as you know, Mike, is basically otter poo, but it's also a territorial marking and, and an advert that this is, their, this is their territory. You can see we've got olds with fish bones and, and some slight scalage in there. It's not at all unpleasant, is it? Strangely enough, it's quite nice. It's slightly <laughs> aromatic, it's got a slight jasmine smell with a, a slight hint of fish, but it's not unpleasant. It's certainly not, it's certainly not a poo smell. Hey, the most important question of all, have you actually seen one yet? Because the signs are obviously here. Yeah, I'm 100% I'm convinced they're here. I mean, I'm looking at their poo right now, but no, I haven't seen them. <laughs> For most of us, seeing is believing, and I really want to see these otters. So I've roped in a good friend of mine, wildlife cameraman Richard Taylor-Jones, to join forces with Ian and to see if they can actually get a shot of the otters he's been tracking. Well, Mike, you've certainly set me an interesting challenge here. British river otters are nocturnal and they have a territory that stretches several miles, meaning that I'll never really know exactly where they're going to be. However, the solution is to set up a camera trap and uh, Ian's been helping me do that over the last few days. The results, well, quite interesting. Rats? Well, boys, that's not going to hit the headlines, is it? I'm going to let Richard and Ian get stuck in with their filming for a few days longer and go off on my own to work out just how far into town the otters might have gone. This is amazing. I'm right at the bottom of the Froom before just around the corner it dips under the city. If I stretch my neck up here, I can just see the cranes that are the top of the Broadmead development right in the heart of the city. But down here, look at this little masonry block. It's plastered full of sprains. They've obviously used it as a latrine, because if I pick it up, it's got that wonderful, distinctive, fishy aroma and I can even see bones in the heart of this one which is brilliant because it tells me 100% guaranteed there are otters right in the centre of Bristol but wouldn't it be lovely to see one? This is hard. It's day about five now and uh, it's been raining like you wouldn't believe. The river front of me uh, is swelling, it's coming up by the hour and my camera trap is in danger. I am now going to have to take it down because I reckon give it another hour or two it's just going to be swept away. I guess the question has to be asked, if otters are back in Bristol, why weren't they here all along? 
I've come to meet up with local man Mike Goodwin, who's lived on the outskirts of Bristol all his life. So, Mike, if the otters are here now, where were they before then? Always here. Um, the river was always a very popular river, and as far as I can remember, back when I was a boy, there was always otters. And here, specifically, right where we stand, was a quarry, which was roughly 50 to 60 feet deep, full of fish. And they had overflow pipes which ran from here to the river. Yeah. Which again was ideal for the otters to get in. Perfect. Out. When they filled the quarry in when I was in my teens, there was eels, hundreds of eels. In. <laughs> so the otters were obviously in here. I'm in a good dinner. How often did you see them then? Lots of times. Lots of times. And you could always see them because they, you, you know, they could hide over there. You couldn't get them because the quarry was, you know, big cliff, cliff face. So they were quite happy. They were quite content. And so you saw them as a kid. What happened? Well, the river got polluted when I was in my early 20s. The bridge down here was covered in foam. So, of course, that killed everything. And presumably the otters with them. So, of course, it's down to man where they disappeared. Unfortunately, it is. Yeah, as I say, they polluted the river and things have just got worse. But what about now? It's coming back, but it's going to take a long time. I see the kingfishers a lot more. That tells me there's more fish. I can actually, you know, I walk down the lane and look over and I can see the fish now we're back. But it's getting better and let's hope it keeps going in that direction. It's time to catch up with Richard and Ian and see how they're getting on with filming that otter. It's four o'clock in the morning now and um, we've given up with the camera trap because basically it's broken and uh, we're just going out on foot. We've only got two days left, so it's desperation tactics. I can't really see that we'll get much luck. Um, but uh, hey, who knows? You've hardly had any sleep over the last month. What news? It's not been the easiest of months, has it? I have to say. Um, we've been out uh, pretty much from dusk until dawn, which in January is about 17 hours of darkness. So it's not been a lot of fun. But? But? We've but. got some fantastic news. Let's have a look. <laughs> I see a pair of luminous eyes staring at me in the shape of an otter. We have wished to learn an otter, so exciting. Richard, I have to say that was one of the ropiest shots of otters I have ever seen, but uh, very exciting nevertheless. I know, I know. I mean, you well know I've, I've filmed otters elsewhere and, uh, and come up with some lovely stuff, but this wasn't about creating a beautiful shot. This was just about getting the shot, wasn't it? And there you go, you got it. You must be chuffed to bits, mate. What I'm, do you think? I'm absolutely over the moon. It's, it's fantastic. I'm really pleased for Richard, and I'm, I'm more, more pleased for Bristol, to be honest, because it's just such a fantastic thing to have in the city. What can I say? They have, at last, at the 11th hour, come up with the goods. Well done, fellas. Cheers, Mike.